Hello, and welcome back to the channel. So this is my 1964 VW bus, and we go camping in this all the time. So I always wanted to have a trailer to carry along to put all of our camping stuff in. So this is a Harbor Freight 48, well, 48 by 40 trailer I picked up off of uh, Facebook Marketplace. And the previous owner already put all the lights on and put the side panels on, wood and everything. And taken and, what can I say, uh, stained it and everything. So I'm pretty happy with that. So I can put all of our camping stuff in here instead of in the bus. Oh, where it normally so would. it makes it more difficult to get inside and just put more stuff outside inside the bus. So it makes it easier. So... The trailer hitch, another thing is the trailer itself came with a title, which is in Pennsylvania. It's uh, a real headache to get a, a title for these things. So that was probably the biggest reason why I bought it too. So the hitch ball size is one and seven eighths. So, so how are we going to tow it? So I need, buses never came with a tow hitch ball or anything like that. So you have to... Get some type of trailer hitch so let me show you this is what i'm working on here so this is the trailer hitch this piece here i got off of a buddy of mine and it connects to the frame horns right underneath on the bus where the transmission is and then there's the engine would sit here and the transmission would be right there so this connects to the frame horns of the bus it comes down and this part here, it was supposed to have some type of bracket that attached to your bumper. But I don't, I know it didn't have the bracket with it or anything to attach it to the bumper for your tongue weight. So, and I didn't want to drill my bumper and I didn't want to um, do anything to scratch the bumper or anything like that. So what I did was I picked up some one and a quarter uh, two by two quarter inch thick angle iron off of a local uh, metal shop and then this I already had laying around which was a two by two by three by sixteen three sixteenths thick metal so what I did was with the brackets here I didn't want to put, drill onto anything onto the body or anything like that that's to hold all the tongue weight so what i did was i wanted to use this two holes there's a hole in the frame i'll show you right now okay so underneath the bus here's the bumper bracket here and the engine and everything i'm on the passenger side so this hole here is an original hole see that one up above my finger that's the original hole that was in the frame so what i did is i wanted to bolt the hitch to my frame not disturb the bumper not drill the bumper not do anything to the bumper so the hitch would be self supporting with the frame so the key the plan was to have a angle iron go across and up and over to here so you saw down underneath the bus so this is this is going to go where the original hole was and then this is the new hole that i put in so there's roughly i put it there about one inch on center one inch from center to center so like i said i didn't want these to disrupt the bumpers or anything like that so i got i made these this is three quarter inch thick plate or bar stock which is two inches wide so it would be the same width as the angle iron so this is going to be the spacer on the outside of the frame Okay, and then on the inside of the frame, it would, uh, I didn't want to use washers or anything, and I wanted to spread out the weight as much as possible. So this is the spacer for the inside of the frame. So when I bolt it together, let me show you. Okay, so this was going to be on the outside of the frame. This is going to be on the outside of the frame. Then it's going to squeeze the frame in between here where my finger is and this plate is going to be onto the inside of the frame 
So whenever I bolt it together, it'll squeeze and pinch the frame super tight and spread the load around all the holes and everything. The final cut of it was roughly about nine and three fourths or whatever big. But what I did was whenever I cut, I drilled the holes and then I drilled the frame and I put mounted these these pieces on there and everything onto the frame. Then I had this roughly, I think I made it about 14 inches long. I made it real long. So once this was bolted on, I bolted the other side on to the other side of the frame. So then I bolted the frame, build, <laughs> bolted the hitch onto the frame horns of the bus. And then I took a floor jack with this long piece of angle iron which I think is roughly about let's take a quick look see here yeah about it's 49 inches long this piece here is 49 inches long again I made it real long so I had extra hanging off the ends so I jacked up I took a floor jack and jacked this up until I hit the front hit the hitch and I got the hitch to the height where I wanted so it cleared the bumper and everything because the bumper is going to come down like this so I cleared that and I took this and I lined them up kind of lined them up and evenly and then I marked it with a marker here and here and I just cut both of the verticals off so I took them back off again I cut them off and then I mounted them back on again mounted that side on again and then I had this piece I did the exact same thing again hooked it all back up and before I even welded anything I put it on there I lined everything up I put it where I wanted to put some clamps on this I didn't, I didn't clamp this but I kind of held it in place and it there and there and I put it all around so then what I did is I tacked weld it on all four locations and all spots so then I could take it off and then I did in the driveway I could do a full welds on both sides here and here they're not beautiful but they're gonna hold here here and also on the inside I went around so I did all those and I've already test fitted again and it works it fits on there perfectly but you'll see it the next one step it will actually be on the bus so another thing I did is I took these bolts out this is the original it's also adjustable with these holes here. You can move it in and out. So I took the original bolts off, and which I don't even think they were grade eight. I'm not sure what they are. So I replaced those with some grade eight bolts, three eighths bolts, fine thread. So working our way out is the hitch ball one and seven eighths. So it'll work with the trailer. And then this piece here is you can order it off of Amazon or anywhere, pretty much just sells hitches, but it's a weld on safety chain hook thing. Hold on a second and let me flip it over. Alrighty, so I flipped the hitch over and this is the, the piece you can buy. Kurt makes it, Kurt hitches. And what I did is I just cleaned it up and welded it on. So then the safety chain um, loop is there for the trailer. And I think the original one might have had something that bolted onto the bumper with a safety chain hooks on it or whatever, but that piece has been long gone. So there's the, it upside down. So the next step is I'm going to cut and clean these up here on the ends. Clean up both sides. You cut a 45 degree angle so it looks a little nicer. And then clean and paint the whole thing going to be the next step and then after that I'll put it up on the bus so I cleaned up the ends cut off the excess here the extra and cleaned and round off the edges that looks pretty good pretty happy with that and the other side Okay, so the hitch is on the bus. So there it is right there. There it is all painted up and that's the only part of it you're going to see. See how the bumper goes down around it? 
Now let me show you down underneath. So here's the long horizontal piece and the vertical piece coming up. Here's the two bolts right here. And this is the spacer goes along the frame of the bus. This is the three quarter spacer back here. So that it would clear the bumper. So here's the original bumper bracket. And then this is up inside the frame rail with the, the quarter inch spacer and the two grade eight bolts holding it in. So it's pitching it into the frame. And the bracket coming down. And there's the original hitch part there. And there's the other piece over here. And then earlier when I was saying about it attaches to the frame horn originally. Here's the frame horn of the transmission. Here's the, the U-bolt that goes up over the transmission cradle right here. And there's the engine. You can see it there. It just horseshoes over top of it and it, it kind of pushes against the cradle. Kind of holds it in place so it doesn't move backwards as you're going. And you can see underneath you can still do your oil change and everything just the same as before. And there's the horizontal and it comes out. Then it comes out. There's the safety chain hook. It is. All right, we're going to... Okay, I'm going to show you the, the wiring that I used or the wiring harness that I used for the trailer. I used a powered tailgate, tail light converter. Uh, it's 156187 and Kurt did not sponsor any of this uh, video, but the important part why I, I uh, picked a powered tail light converter is that this converter has its own power supply. You power supply it from the battery. So it's not using the turn signals or power from the original. It's just using the original lights as a signal to tell them, tell this to signal the lights for brake, left hand turn, right hand turn. So what you need is you just need the kit. The kit does not come with this or this. The kit itself comes with instructions which tell you exactly how to do it. Of course the box and it tells you it's three amps each for the turning signals and five amps each for the running light. But uh, it's such a, it, it's basically a normal trailer, like, like kit or whatever. It's not very heavy duty. So you have this, you have your power wire, you have your wire that goes over to the one side, but I'll go over, I'll point a little bit on the bus on this. So then it, it converts it all into a standard four pin. And what I did, what you will need is of course wiring to wire it up to your battery. And then I go on to eBay and I actually just buy like a 10 pack of these, which is a fuse holder. And it uses your normal blade fuses and then it covers it up and it kind of keeps it waterproof, but it's not really waterproof, probably more like water resistant. So then I went to Harbor Freight and I bought one of these, you plug it in and it'll, uh, you can test your, you can kind of see it on there. It says your tail light, left hand turn signal, right hand turn signal. So you're be able to test it without actually connecting it to a trailer, which is very nice. It's only three dollars at Harbor Freight, and this was probably about a dollar when you buy a pack of them on eBay. And this was probably roughly about thirty dollars or thirty-five dollars. You can find them on Amazon. But the most important part is to remember is, is this is a powered tail light, and in the instructions. They don't really highlight it very bright, or they should make this a lot bigger, but it's very important that if using a converter as the powered module, which the, that's the kind we have, um, the red stop wire must be grounded. So the red wire in this harness needs to be grounded because this is a powered one. So it's not like you're, it's, if you follow this instruction, you kind of, or 
kind of follow the wires and or look at these things and you don't pay attention to this this is where it's gonna really mess you up and it'll burn out the module so make sure you make the red wire the stop stop signal wire which would be your stop lights make sure you put that on to ground so you actually ground that with your ground wire your green wire and your red wire get bolted together and screwed to the chassis so the rest of these are self-explanatory you can kind of follow it along there's your fuse that i just mentioned and the wire running over from the battery so and it all comes with these little clips here so you can go into there you'll need a test light as well it kind of gives you some other stuff that i didn't really worry about but anyways the most important thing is this that power which seems weird because it's uh you're grounding a, a red wire but that's what the instructions say and it will not work unless you do that so let's go over to the bus this is a second module that i have for the our volkswagen jetta that i'm going to be hooking up but i'll go over to the bus and i'll show you all right this is the engine compartment i have it sitting i use double-sided tape and i have it sitting right here and then here is the four pin wire i have it wrapped up inside of here and what i did is i used this side it's meant to be on your driver's side or left hand side but i used my wires here for the turn signals and your stop light and everything so then i ran a wire up underneath here up inside here over and the green wire here goes over for your right turning signal so then i put I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but I ran the wire over here. Like, there it is. There's my uh, fused coming straight from the battery. And I have it running over to here and then over to there to here. So this is all now powered. I keep this all wrapped up and I'm keeping it over here behind the back. It seems to be fine. It's not going anywhere. But uh, pretty simple to hook up. Okay, so now I got it. I unraveled the wire. You can see they give you plenty of wire to get down. And I'm going to show you how that little module... Also, the, 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 the kit comes with this rubber cap that covers this. So, I'm going to show you. See here? There's a little module. Just plugs right into it. And watch, you'll be able to see a good test of the lights. I wasn't back here, but I'm assuming that it probably worked. So see how that's a nice little tester and you don't have to mess around with hooking it up to the trailer. And you can take and put the rubber cap on and keep water out of there while it's in your engine compartment. And there you go. Then I ravel up the cord and I stick it in, in between here just for storage. Alrighty, we got lights. We got trailer, let's go do some action shots. Here's the trailer connected to the hitch, to the bus. And you can see it's slightly tilted upwards because the hitch is a bit higher, but there's no adjustment in it. I was thinking maybe if I can get some 12 inch wheels, maybe it would take it up. But right now there's eight inch wheels, but I'm gonna leave it as is for now. 
So close up, here's the wiring coming out. It's a standard four pin. I'll go over what I, how I connected it to the bus. And here's the safety chains are now on along with the safety chain hook. Then lock down onto there. And there it is, all connected. It's actually pretty small. You can feel a little bit of it while you're driving. You can kind of feel a little bit of the weight of it. Pulling a little bit, but it doesn't shake or shimmy or nothing or move. We've already taken it for a pretty good spin so far. Thank you to everybody who watched and enjoyed. Hopefully you learned something about a trailer hitch for a bus and a trailer. Thank you very much. Like, share, subscribe, comment. Let's hear what you got to say. Thank you very much, and you have a great day. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.